Hello everyone. I'm back. My goodness, did I talk a lot this morning and I still didn't get to finish our, uh, our drawing. Um, we finished off the trees, but we didn't finish off the mountains. So that is what I'm going to jump into in today's live stream tonight. We're going to finish this off. I'm hoping to only spend about an hour on it and then I will move on to something else. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, the first hour will be on YouTube to finish off part two of the how to draw that we started this morning. And then this afternoon, um, excuse me, after an hour, once we're done with this, I then will be ending the stream on YouTube and I'll just be doing a hangout session on Twitch. So if you are watching this on YouTube, cool for the next hour, just so you know, eventually I will be cutting the YouTube stream and it'll be just a hangout session later tonight. We'll do some wood burning together. So let's go ahead and jump into this and I will switch over to my working screen so you can see what I got going on here. Just real quick, if you didn't catch the stream this morning, that's okay. Um, I basically just did the pencil line for the mountains. Um, you can go ahead and watch that stream. It's still on my channel. It's also on Twitch. Um, and we went through the realistic, the simple, and the stylized versions of trees. And then we switched over to mountains. And I just didn't get a chance to finish before I had to log off. And quite honestly, I needed a little bit of a break because I am not used to talking this much. <laughs> um, it definitely is new for me to be talking so much. All right, so we're going to focus on this first. Something I already mentioned in the last stream, um, but just in case you didn't catch it and you're just joining now, I wanted to show the travel journals that I mentioned. Just again, to give you an idea of um, what my travel journals look like. And so when I am traveling and sketching, this is my preferred style. I'm showing you alternative styles today, but this is my preferred style. I use this toned sketchbook and I use the black ink for shadows and the white ink for highlights. So that's just something to keep in mind, especially because we were doing trees earlier. So I showed you this illustration from um, Korea when I was visiting South Korea. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. This is how I do it when I'm doing it for myself. All right. Let's put those aside. Let's jump right into this because, like I said, I don't want to be more than an hour on this. If you did not catch this morning, I am using microns and we are doing realistic, simple, and stylized mountains and rocks. Um, I'm going to jump in here. I'm using mostly an O2. These were not the ones I was using earlier, were they? Get there. I don't know why I have so many O2s here. And five. Is that you? Yes, my OA. Okay. So for realistic, I'm going to keep it very small. I'm going to use an O2 mostly. And then I am also going to um, be jumping into the O5s and O3s a little bit. And we're just going to go ahead and loosely sketch this out. And normally I would go from left to right, but to, I'm just going to try to speed this along and I feel more confident filling in the lines here with this arch first. I probably honestly should have started with the stylus first because that's where I am most confident. But essentially I'm just using the two to fill in our lines here that we created earlier in the day today. And I am trying to stay loose. Like, and what I mean by that is that I'm not following the pencil lines to a T. I'm kind of letting the, the pen flow as I draw. And that's just so I don't get these sketchy lines. I want my lines to feel really crisp and clean and solid. And so that is how I'm going to start this off. And now I'm going to switch over to my um, 005 here that I have. And like I mentioned earlier in today, this is a very small tip. It's kind of hard for you guys to see, but once I do the line work, I'll hold this drawing up close to the camera so you can really see what I'm talking about, where I'm talking. I'm going to use this to create little lines here. And again, this top bar is supposed to be a little bit more realistic. It's already kind of getting a little way, a little ways away from realism for me. Um, 
but essentially what I would do is I would just use this light pen to start doing some shading. And if you really want to get particular, you're definitely going to want to look at your reference image that we had earlier. And this is the Archway from Arches National Park. If you're just joining today, um, that is what we used earlier to, to start this off. And um, I was pretty good about marking where I wanted my shadows to be, so I feel pretty confident about doing it without looking at the reference image. But if you're new to sketching from life, you're definitely going to want to either draw from life or draw from an image and keep it in mind when you're adding your shadows to help create that realism. And again, you don't want to draw your highlights, you want to draw your shadows and your mid-tones. Okay? And if you're new here, you're just joining in today on part two, then um, what I mean by that is when you want the highlight, so the, the lightest part of whatever you're drawing, you don't want to outline that when you're drawing realism because there is no defined highlight in real life. So we're just going to go ahead and just do our shadows here and I'm going to fill these in with color just like I did with the trees. So if you didn't catch that earlier, oops, thank you, I will lower the music just a little bit. I had a problem earlier where the music wasn't loud enough and then you couldn't hear the music. I'll lower this down just a little bit. Okay. So we're going to do the same style here as we did here. Um, we're just going to do some light line work and then add in the color to make it really pop. And again, I'm using the 005 micron pen here. And I'm going to hold this up nice and close to the camera so you can really see those thin lines much nicer. So you can see what I'm going for there. All right. And now there's, of course, a lot of pencil lines there. So I'm going to go ahead and erase. Actually, I'll give it a minute for the ink to set. I don't want to smear the ink. Let's move on to this mountain. This mountain over here was part of the Rocky Mountain National Park um, image that we pulled up that was on the uh, website, the park, the National Park's website. And so I mentioned, you know, if you're really going for realism here and you're doing just the pen, you're going to be doing a lot of filling in your shadows with lines and then filling in your midtones with lines that are evenly spaced out. And then again, leaving your highlights. Do not outline them, just leave them. And if you really want them to pop, you're going to abut a shadow right next to that highlight because having a dark dark next to a light light is going to make the light seem brighter. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in just a little bit. I don't want to get too much pen on these because like I said, I'm going to be using watercolors next for myself. But if you were using just pen and ink, you're going to spend a lot of time building up these values very slowly all the way through the piece. All right, I'm going to switch over to the O2 pen here. I'm just kind of rough these in and again I've already said this a couple times but I just want it to be very clear I'm just doing the very bare minimum of lines here because I know I'm going to go back in and fill this in with watercolor and get really detailed but I just want it to be clear on what you need to do if you're going to stick with pen so this rock rocky area is a little bit different it was kind of like more individual rock so if you're going to stick with pen you want to kind of look at your reference image, look at whatever you're sketching, and really highlight those rocks. And actually, I honestly would probably switch back from the O2 into the double five, double zero five again, um, because then you're going to get those tiny little lines and dots and details. And I'm just going to put a few for continuity's sake. And you're probably going to end up going a little bit slower than I'm going, and that's okay because I'm trying to speed it up today. For the tutorial's sake, I'm just trying to finish off this part too. So you may find that it's going to take you a lot longer to build up gradients, and that's okay. There's no problem with going slower. I am moving kind of fast. Okay. 
So I think that's pretty good for me. Let me just do a few little lines here. And these are the trees that are in the front, which I'm going to do all in watercolor. And there were some lines here as well. All right, so I think that's looking pretty good. I'm going to move on to the volcano that we did. Um, and this is a volcano that I visited in Arizona. And um, I believe it's called the Sunset Crater, actually. So for this one, I'm going to show you a little bit of if you're doing realistic ink. Well, I don't want to quite overpower this because I did want to show you the gradients in watercolors. But, um, if you're just joining this particular image that we had, which actually I should pull it up. Sunset Crater, Arizona. Let's see if I have it still up. Alright, it's right outside of Flagstaff. Um, Alright, so this is the image we used earlier. And if you can see, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. You can kind of see that. Um, there is a change in the ground, the color of the ground. Now, if I was doing this in all pen and ink, I would use that same process of filling in the highlights and the gradients, but I would treat it as a color rather than a value. What do I mean by that? So that means this dark black gray soil and rock would be your darkest value. Because if you squint at the image, you'll see that is your darkest value. Now I know I haven't talked much about squinting tonight, but if you caught part one, I talked pretty extensively about that. If you just squint your eyes at the image you're looking at, it'll help you to see the darkest darks and the lightest lights gets rid of those mid-tones. In this image, if I was doing all of this in ink, darkest values would be these dark grays here, mid-tones would be these red browns right here, and your highlight would be this kind of muted green that's here. I really want to show that in watercolors, so I'm not going to do a ton of pen and ink here. Um, what I will do, since we pretty extensively covered trees, is I will do a pretty heavy um, fake tree line here and this is obviously not realistic but just to kind of show you how I would start and do this illustration as if it was in my sketchbook I would use this really heavy trees because that's what's really in front of me and do these kind of like squiggly lines and I would start that off in my sketchbook to kind of make this foreground abstract stylized element and then I would move into realism as I got further away from me into the scene that I'm drawing from life. So from stylized to realism, it kind of puts like a page break almost if it was in my sketchbook. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to chime in with any questions at any time. Um, and I will try to do my best to answer them for you. It is a little bit faster if you hop onto Twitch rather than YouTube, because YouTube's a little bit delayed, especially to chat. So I'm much faster to see what's going on in the Twitch stream. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and very lightly add a few lines in here, very little. And again, I'm using my O2 and I'm very lightly drawing. I'm not bearing down hard on this. I don't want big, thick, line I want to be very light and if you were doing your pen you definitely want to do what we talked about earlier today where you're taking your thicker pens so you're like your 05 your 03 and doing these little spotted trees that are closest to you in a darker line weight thicker line weight and the ones that are further away you're going to use your 02 for the, this mid-range tree and you're going to use your double zero five for the trees that are really far away. And I'll do a couple of those just as an example. Even though I prefer to do them in watercolor, I'm just going to do a few so that you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Ooh, let me tell you, I am not used to speaking this much. I did a four hour stream this morning and my 
throat is killing me. <laughs> I talk a lot, but I don't talk this much usually. All right, so I think I got my lines here. I'm just gonna very quickly do what I was talking about. One of the trees, or three of the trees, I should say. I'm gonna use my 05, and I'm gonna do these shrubby trees right in the front. I'm just gonna look at my reference image here. They are kind of oval shaped. I'm gonna do the shrub right in the front here. Make it look like a scrub tree, which is probably what it is, what it looks like. Very loosely do that in a five. Now I'm gonna go to my mid-range tree. I'm gonna use an O2. I actually would probably use an O1, but I don't think, oh, I do have one. I'm gonna use an O1 for that mid-range. And it's a similar shape. They're getting a little bit more sparse. They're not as full if you look at your our reference image here. So they'll be like a little bit more whole. It's not gonna be a perfect oval, but you get the idea. Very light and you'll see it, the thickness here makes that tree feel closer. So it's not just about the size, it's also about the line weight. All right, and then lastly, the tiny, tiny, tiny little trees on the top of the mountain. We're gonna switch back to our double zero five and then very 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 lightly like no pressure at all just go ahead and do the little scrub brush right here at the top and that even was a little big Let's go even smaller than that and just do a little scrub brush like that all right so i'm gonna hold this close to the camera so that you get a better view of it i know sometimes those little details can get lost when they're far away so this is what I'm talking about. Just to refresh real quick, abstract heavyweight lines to provide a page break if I was doing this in my sketchbook. And then an 05 line weight for the closest tree, an 01 for the midline tree, and then the double five here for those. And I would keep doing this for all the trees if I was gonna do this all in pen and ink, but I'm gonna move on to color Think this is good it gives you an idea of what you need to do if you're going to do it all in pen and ink okay we're going to move on to simple and just like i did with the trees we'll come back here really quick just so you understand what i'm talking about i'm going to outline everything because for me simple is a very graphic um a graphic shape rather than it still lives in realism so it's not completely stylized and crazy like we did with these trees and what we're going to do down here but it's not realistic in its shading in its line weight in its color it's a lot more um simplified okay so we're going to do that for this i'm going to outline all of the different lines that i drew here and i'm going to block some things in and i'm going to move pretty quickly through this because I think there's not much for me to repeat. It's very similar to the trees. I'm going to go in, I'm going to block in my colors just like I said I was going to do when I did the pencil lines here. And in the front here, I'm going to just do these tree lines. I'm not going to do anything in front of the tree line. If you go back to our reference image from the National Rocky Mountain National Park website, there is another line of trees and the water, which we will do some water down here when we get into stylized, but for the most part, I'm just gonna use this tree line right I am gonna outline my highlights because I'm trying to do this flat 2D graphic style. So it is very different. And quite honestly, I probably should have switched from an 05 to an 02. It's gonna look a little bit too thick now on that side. So that was my mistake. See how heavy that feels, and this feels much more receded back. I definitely should have used the O2 for these lines, but too late now. We'll work with it. There's this other line of trees here. And then I really wanted to emphasize snow in the valley. I'm just going to do a couple of rock lines here. And a lot of those rocks I'm going to recreate with color value. If I was doing this simple stylized look with just pen, I would create more lines here for a mid-tone value here, um, but I'm not going to do that.
And again, if at any point you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comment box. Or if you just popped in to say hi, that's cool too. If you are watching on YouTube, or if you're on Twitch and you'd like to join me on YouTube, I will have a more condensed version of this entire live stream that I have done. Um, along with how you can take the things that we learned today and apply them into ideas for your bullet journal. So that will be a video that I will be editing down probably tomorrow, and you'll have it in the next day or two. Alright, so I'm switching back to an 08 for this nice archway here. Um, what I want to do, I want this thick line to be really in the foreground here. Um, but I don't want the details to be thick. And I want there to be a heavy line weight. I'm going to stop right about there. I want this heavy line weight, you to feel it on the underside of this arch that so creates almost like a shadow. And then this is well where I put these heavy shadow lines here. I'm going to do a nice thick shadow here. And again right here. And if you just bear with me, once I'm done inking this, I'll show it closer to the camera so you can really see those lines in case they're not showing up crystal clear today on the stream. Alright, so that's what I'm going to do with my 08, just across the bottom. I'm still leaving some of these lines to be a lighter line weight, just for, so it doesn't feel too heavy in the front. Switching over to an 05, and then I'm going to continue to do those lines that I did right here in the front with my 05. Okay, a little bit of rock formation. With the Arches National Park, which is where this is from, the rocks are really um, smooth. You can see the lines in the stone much clearer than, say, if you were at Rocky Mountain National Park or if you were up north somewhere um, where it would be more like a granite, which is kind of like really rough and jagged. This rock is much more smooth. You can see the different layers in it. So there's a lot more smooth lines that go all the way across versus with the Rocky Mountain National Park, a lot more jagged lines that are kind of like cross-stitched almost. Not cross-stitched, cross-hatched. All right. I'm just finishing off this here with the 05 and now I'm going to switch over to the um, 02 and continue up and I'm actually going to stay with the 02 for the general outline and for a few of the main lines but then I'm going to switch to the lighter thinner double zero five for the detail line. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the double zero, if I can find it, here it is, double zero five, and do those light rock lines here very lightly. Again, don't press too hard on your micron because you can break it. If you do not have microns, this is something that I didn't talk about in the tree video earlier. If you don't have microns, you can't afford them because they are a little bit more pricey. You can still do this with ballpoint pens. What I suggest you look at if you're buying from, say, Walmart um, is a good place to look because they got the different line weights. Staples is another place to look. Um, you can get these ballpoint pens in a couple of different thicknesses. I prefer to use in my regular journal um, the 0.38, which is very small. I'll, do this. I'll just do this right here. This is a tangent, but I think it's important. You can get really small lines, really thick lines with this 0.38. And then there's also additionally the standard ballpoint size. Let's see if I have one here. I probably don't. Yeah, all the ones I have here are 3.38. But the standard ballpoint pen size is actually bigger than that. Um, I'm really surprised. Normally I have at least one. 
Anyways, if you can get one of these and one of the standard size and then maybe one of like the felt tip markers, kind of like this is a more expensive Stedler permanent one, but they make cheaper ones from Stedler and from um, Pilot that have the felt tip. And that will already allow you to get a varying line weight without spending money on these really expensive microns. Now, I cannot speak to whether this ink is archival, which we did touch on in the previous broadcast um, live stream, that if you are making something that you want to preserve over an extended period of time, you definitely want it to be archival. And I cannot guarantee that these are archival. And now I just lost my music, so I'm just hopping over here to turn my music back on. Okay, so that's just a suggestion. If you want something cheaper to carry around with you, um, you can't afford the Micron, and that is an alternative, a little bit more affordable. So now we're moving on to this last volcano piece here. And I'm we're making pretty good time, but I'm going to try to speed this up even more because I'm talking too much still, and I really want to get to do some pyrography tonight, um, which we haven't really touched on yet. Okay. So I'm going to use the 08. I'm going to do really heavy, thick pine tree line right here in the front again. And then I'm going to do this line here in the 08 as well and then I'm going to switch over to the 02 and bring in the lighter line work here as we work through the colors and I'm really going to define that I'm not going to do any of the trees here I really want the trees to be in color only on this particular mountain illustration and I'm going to switch back here. I think this O2 is just a little bit too... You know what? Actually, I'll just go a little bit heavier on it on my line weight here. So I am pressing down a little bit harder than I normally do on my O2 here so that I can get these nice, thick, blocked out lines. And that's where the color of the stone, again, if you've tuned in here, if you're just tuning in, so I see that a few people have popped on. Um, I'm defining the different color in the rock because on this particular mountain there is a change in the color because it is a volcanic mountain. All right. so I think those are pretty solid. I'm going to move on to the stylized. I'm going to go very thick, very quickly, very fast. I don't think you guys necessarily need me to break down the line work too much. I think we've covered pretty extensively how you can utilize line weight and I am going to emphasize this water in the front. Do a really stylized pine tree outline here. And I'm going to cross it over into this arch. Even though it doesn't make a ton of sense, because on this bottom row we're really trying to go very stylized, I am just going very heavy, very thick. But we're just having fun with it. And then let me get over here. I'm still going to do line thickness here on this arches piece right in the front. And actually, I'm going to emphasize this arch as like a doorway. So I'm really going to go really thick line all the way around on the inside, the negative space of those stones, because I think that will look kind of cool when I finish this up. And you'll see I'm kind of naturally adding in these little dots. That's just my normal stylized style. Like I said, when you're first getting started, you're going to want to try to find something to copy, whether you're copying another artist's style or a movie or a video game or a cartoon or whatever it is you want to try to copy. Try to mimic the style of something else when you're first getting started. If you feel like it is too stressful to try to determine what your particular style is, because sometimes it can be kind of stressful to try to come up with this style of your own and something that's original, it can be really hard sometimes. So if you find that it is too hard, definitely try to copy or mimic something else. First, now be honest about copying. And I'm going to jump on my pet peeve right here. 
And just to remind you that don't copy someone else's style and then claim it as your own and post it somewhere on the internet, you will eventually get caught. And there are actually, um, there was a girl in my school in one of my classes who got kicked out for doing that exact same thing. She was drawing her own drawing, but she was copying someone else's style and calling it her own and she got expelled from college, art college. Um, and she really suffered from that. So do not do that. Do it for practice, but do not call it your own. Be very honest. I'm always honest about where my images come from. I'm always honest about what kind of, where I'm pulling from, if I pull from other YouTubers or other streamers. Um, and I think it's really important that you are honest with yourself and honest with other people about where you are pulling your information from. All right, I'm keeping it really nice and thick. I was going to add some line weight variation, but you know what? I really want to move this stream along, so I'm, I'm going kind of thick here. I'll have some variation when I add in the color. If you were trying to do a more finished illustration here, a more stylized finished illustration, you probably still would want to do the line variation that we talked up up here. Ooh, that was a really... Hello, how are you? I'm good tonight. Um, HNS. 96H. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoy, are enjoying it. Oof, that music. Pretty intense. Hopefully you guys can still hear me pretty clear. I'm just going to knock this down just a little bit more. It's kind of loud in my headset. Um, so, keeping the lines nice and thick here for myself, but if you are doing this, even if you were drawing it stylized for yourself, you may want to consider doing this line weight variation that we talked about up here the really thick lines in the front and then keep going thinner and thinner and thinner as you go back because you want to kind of create visual interest with line weight even when you are doing more cartoony stylized looks okay so I'm gonna finish this off all in this nice thick line and then I'm gonna go back in and do a few details in a different um, line weight just to create a little bit of variation here and again I'm moving really fast today I'm trying to get this done and I really want to finish this off tonight on a strong note and it's okay if you are moving much slower than me all right so I'm just doing some more like stripey lines and I kind of talked about when I drew this that I really one of the things I really love about the red rock in Arizona is that you can see the patterns the stripes on the stones and so that's what I'm really emphasizing with this stylized version of the stones and we're really going to highlight that when we put the color on this piece okay uh, so I'm doing it with the pen but I'm also going to do it even more when we talk about color all right so I think this is pretty good I'm going to do this rough shape down here more dots. okay that's looking pretty good I think I'm going to run an, an eraser over this so that we can go ahead and start fresh when we start adding color. We're almost ready to start adding some watercolors into this. So you'll see I'm erasing out all those values that we talked about because I'm going to create my value not with a pencil but with the watercolors. Excuse me. Probably going to have to take a sip of a drink after this as well. <laughs> So we're just giving this nice good erase. I'd be a little bit more technical with it if I was doing a finished illustration, but just for demonstration purposes, being very loose, taking out my pencil line. So that when I do the color, I can really see what the color does to each of the examples. Now, I talked about this a little bit this morning. And if you're just joining and you haven't seen this morning's stream, which is part one, the first thing I'm going to talk about when we're doing the realistic, the first row here, is that honestly, if you really wanted it to be really hyper realistic, if you were doing color, you actually don't want any pen lines. You either want to stick all with pen or stick all with color. Because when you outline things with black and then color them in with watercolors, you are already creating more of a cartoon graphic style because there are no out real outlines. Nothing is outlined in life. 
um, except for cartoons and graphics. Um, everything is all about shades and value and color and light. So just keep that in mind. I would, if you're really trying to do realism and especially hyper realism, stick with one medium. Don't try to incorporate multiple mediums. Now, if you want to be like me and do more stylized style like I do, then you are probably going to want to do more of this mid-range or this stylized version of things because you're going to want to do those heavy, heavy line weight blacks and then bring in the color for fun. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm being a little too, too careful with this. Good enough. I think we're good. Got a majority of the pencil lines off here. All right, so we're going to start with the realism. Again, keeping in mind, you really want hyper-realistic. You're going to want to practice not having any lines at all. That's really challenging. It's quite hard to paint that way. Um, all right. So again, we're going to focus on values, color, and I am going to talk about lighting. So I went into a really big story earlier today. I'm not going to do that again. I essentially, earlier on when I was doing these trees, when we talked about doing the trees, I talked about how um, true color has many different colors in it. And for this example, I didn't do that. I, I went with bark is brown or yellow and tree, uh, leaves are green because that is the stereotypical understanding of color. So this, I want to try something a little different. I want to try to add in the lighting and the color as, as, as the relationship between the lighting and the color which can get a little complicated but i'm going to go ahead and pull up our reference image for this again and just explain very quickly once again what i'm talking about so if you were drawing a mountain chances are you were thinking in your head it's either going to be blue or gray maybe a bluish gray if you're really reaching out there um, that's typically what people see when they see mountains. They either think they're gray, rock, or maybe the Arizona arches would be red, obviously. Um, but when we're looking at this image, and again, it's, it's kind of hard to see. It's not as good as if you pulled it up yourself on your own phone. But look at the wide range of colors, even in this photo, even looking through the stream where it's not so clear. There's these really soft light blues, and there's darker blues. And there's more of like this greenish blue color here. Even the snow, which is white snow, has that blue tint to it. Then you look at up here on this, the, the tip of the rock, which is obviously in the sunlight. It's hitting the sun right here. And that is more of a lighter brown, almost yellow tan. There's some really warm hues in there from the light of the sun. So those are all things that I'm talking about when I say, you know, if you're drawing really flat, so when we go into simple and stylized, we're going to draw very flat colors. If you're drawing more realistic, you really need to try to look at all the different variations of color. And honestly, I think it's a little bit easier to do that with a photograph because you can kind of analyze with a color picker, even if you've got a digital drawing program and kind of analyze the variations in color. But when you're in person, it's kind of hard to do. You kind of have to break it down and really get your eye to focus on the lighting details. All that being said, I'm going to move kind of quickly through this. That's all stuff you definitely want to keep in mind if you're trying to paint more realistically. Really focusing on what colors are there and how the light is affecting those colors. You don't want it to be flat. All right, I'm going to jump right in here. That was a little bit too much blue to start off with. But since I already got these pretty heavy pen lines, that I did a little bit of shading with. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but the main thing I wanted to show you is what I was talking about with this peak here. So I'm adding in this blue as my base color, right? But I really want that warm gray vibe that we're getting here. So I'm going to use yellow ochre. Let me tip this forward just a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. I think I'm going to use yellow ochre and I think I am actually going to pull in just a little bit of 
this manufactured gray. And what I mean by manufactured is that it's actually a combination that I made um, with black Windsor Newton watercolor and combining it with white Windsor Newton gouache. Um, and so I made this gray color that I'm gonna mix in here. And then I'm gonna very lightly bring in that warmth. And it's kind of a little more muddy than I like. If I was working on watercolor paper, I would continue to push this a lot more. Um, and I could do that without ruining the paper, but because we are drying on cardstock today, um, it's gonna be a little challenging to do that. I'm gonna bring in just a little dash of yellow, a little bit too much yellow. So what I'm gonna do, I showed this trick earlier. If you had a paper towel, I would just lay the paper towel down and suck some of that yellow up. But since I don't have any paper towels here, I'm gonna just push all the water out of my brush and then reabsorb that pigment back into my brush. Still a little too much yellow, but not too bad. I'm gonna hold this up to the camera so you can kind of see. It's a little bit muddy. And like I said, if I was using watercolor paper, I would continue to mess with this. Doing realistic watercolors is very challenging. It's a very slow process. It takes a lot of back and forth and push and pull when it comes to adding water adding pigment and vice versa. You gotta build up layers very slowly. It would take a very long time to demonstrate that today. Um, so I'm just showing you a very bare, bare, bare bones minimum that you can do with watercolors and a few tips to improve how they look. All right. I'm just getting too saturated tonight. I think it's because I let my watercolors sit with water on them, so they're very full of pigment. All right, so I'm gonna quickly move through this just a little bit more. I'm gonna bring in those greens. I'm gonna pull more from the sap green because it's a little bit more muted, and this yellow ochre green that I mixed earlier today when we were doing the trees. Yeah, that feels a little bit more natural. If you were going more realistic, here and again we talked more about trees in the earlier stream so if you missed that you can watch the, the, the recast of that stream but um, what I would do is actually pull in this triple zero brush paper definitely matters um, for so for those of you that are on YouTube if you missed the chat um, HNS 96H asked what kind of paper does it matter it definitely does matter. So um, I try to show the most affordable option, which is a cardstock resume paper that you can get from Staples or Walmart. Um, and I like to do that because I like to show that it is possible to use a cheaper paper. If you really want to draw really, or paint, excuse me, really nice, realistic landscape illustrations, you're going to want a cold press watercolor paper. And you can test all sorts of different brands. My Personal favorite brand is Arches. I love them, they come in blocks, and I love their sketchbooks too. Um, they are very expensive. There is also Canson, um, Strathmore, there's some mid-range watercolor papers that are really good. Um, if you're just starting out, um, a 100 pound or 200 pound weight paper is fine. I use 300 pound hot press Arches watercolor paper they're expensive. Um, but for me, it's worth it because I can push and pull those colors and the paper won't deteriorate. It'll hold up over time. So it definitely does matter if you are very serious about this and you really want to dive into it and do a really good job. You're going to want to invest in better paper. Um, if you're just playing around and you're not quite sure, I'm trying to think if they're still available. They used to be available at Michael's. I don't know if they're still available anymore, but um, there used to be these packs that you could buy that have like a sample, basically. Every single page is a sample of a different type of watercolor paper. And usually they go by brand. So you would buy like a pack of Canson um, watercolor papers and it would show you the wide range of watercolor papers that they offer, um, or Strathmore, or Arches, or et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't quite know exactly where to get those. Maybe you could find them on Amazon. I bet you you could find them on Amazon. But um, sample watercolor sample packs 
should pull that up if you search those. So if I was going for really hyper realistic, I would look at these pine trees and I just remembered, I also told you I was gonna show you how to do the um, birch tree trunks here from earlier today. So I, please don't let me forget that if I do pop it in the chat. Yeah, sure, you totally should try to paint. It's a lot of fun. Um, and you know, if you're just getting started and you wanna play around, this paper works just fine um, if you don't want to invest a ton of money into it. All right, so I think you're getting the idea here. I would do these little needles here. And there is some birch trees here. So kind of like what I'm going to do here, a little less obvious, is I'm going to bring in some white gouache and do just a couple of little tree trunks. And they're going to kind of blend in because I don't have a ton of pigment. And I'll hold this up to the camera so you can see a little bit better in just a minute. But just do a couple of little tree chunks here in the front. So I keep building up those layers. I'm going to hold this up so you can see it up close. Give it a minute for the camera to focus. And that gives you an idea of kind of how you would start to build up the layers. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the red rocks because it's a little bit different for rock. Um, like we were doing with the pen, you're going to start off with your general shade, starting off really orange, and I'm going to mix these in. So I'm using a bright orange color. I, I think I want to say it's cadmium orange. I might be wrong because I know this is cadmium yellow, so I might be confusing that. Mix it with the yellow ochre that I have. And I'm even going to pull in some of this green so that it gets really nice and muddy. I don't want this to feel cartoon orange. I want it to feel a little more natural. Alright, and I'm pulling in a little bit of burnt sienna in here. Okay, I think that's a really good base color. I'm going to just add some water so it's not so much pigment. And then I'm going to do a nice base wash on this. And again, I'm moving a little bit fast. Um, you probably would want to build up layers even slower than I am. This is still quite a bit of pigment for realism. Because you really want to save your highlights. Um, and obviously, I, I know I've said this plenty of times today, but um, there are no white highlights in real life. But I save those white highlights to kind of give me an idea of where I want them to be. And then towards the very end, I'll then go back in with just like a tiny, I'll show you here, just a tiny bit of pigment, mostly water, and just kind of knock those highlights down, just a little color. So they still pop as highlights, but they're not pure white. If you're not trying to do realism, but you're trying to do a more stylized watercolor, you would leave those white highlights in. Because that is a more traditional kind of watercolor style. Okay. So this is kind of layering up really nicely. I'm going to add just a little bit more orange, just a tiny bit into this. To kind of get the next layer a little bit brighter. And then after that, I'm going to add in my shadows on this. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to use this um, burnt umber, which has a little bit of green in it from the earlier today. I'm going to try to get that green out. Water it down. So I've got this muddy dark brown. I don't want it to have too much pigment, so I'm really adding in a lot of water here. And then I'm going to go back over where we did these pen lines and really add in my shadows here. And keep in mind with watercolors, you can always go darker. But once you go really dark, it's really hard to pull those white highlights. So just move very slowly if you're starting to learn how to shade with watercolors. Build those layers up very, very, very slowly.
And again, for anyone who's just joining us, if you have any questions, feel free to pop in the chat box or just say hi. I'd love to see who's checking out the stream. All right, so I'm just adding in my shadows here and I'm gonna move along pretty soon. I'm not gonna do this whole thing. Like I said, realism takes a really long time. I'm just trying to give you an example of how you can create the mountains, the rocks, the trees, and start to learn about realism. All right, and lastly, we're gonna focus on this volcano. I'm gonna pull up my reference image again of the Flagstaff Sunset Crater Volcano. Looks like my stream dropped. If you can still hear me, it looks like my stream dropped out. So I'm just going to make sure that my stream is running okay. Because I want to make sure that we are still live and you can still hear me. It might just be my second computer that I have up and running. Okay, looks like I'm still going. Looks like it's a problem with my other computer. So hopefully you can still hear me here. I'll keep moving forward. And hopefully I'm recording this. So if it doesn't work, it'll hopefully pop up. All right, there it goes. Yep, just a problem with my second computer. Okay, so we're moving into the sunset crater here. And um, like I said before, there's variation in the color of the stone that is on the volcano. So I'm just going to build up layers very slowly. I'm going to start with this gray black that is on the volcanic rock sand mixture here. I'm going to mix all these colors together. It's getting really muddied here. This is probably a combination of yellow ochre, a little bit of green, a little bit of burnt umber um, in there. So it's kind of like this muddy brown. And I'm going to start with that. And I'm probably going to end up adding a little bit more black to it. But let's just see what this gets us to start with. Actually, that's pretty darn close. When I'm finished with this section, I will hold this up to the camera so you can get a close-up look of the entire realistic bar that we just did here. Um, but let me just finish this off. So I like that for the dark. I'm going to keep that going over here. All right. Keep that going over here just a little bit. Now at the very top of the mountain is kind of like this reddish brown color. So I'm going to bring in more burnt sienna to do that. Ooh, a little bit too much pigment. Add a little bit more water in there to water it down. Don't want it to be that heavy when we're doing a more realistic color. All right. And then lastly, we had that, that pale green gray color. So I'm going to take this brown that we created. I'm going to pull it over here on my very messy palette. I'm going to mix it a little bit with this green right here. I wish I could remember the names of these two greens. They're new. This is like a teal green that I just recently bought. And this is a darker green that I also recently bought. I'm going to pull a little bit from this. And you'll see there's very little pigment there. It might even look white on your screen. Um, very, very little. And I'm just going to bring that in and do a thin wash. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, that looks great. Okay. I probably won't have to do much to that. All right, so as that gets dry... I will go back in and add the trees that we have here, this gradient of trees. I want to add more of those and show you how to do that, but I have to let this dry first before I can do that. So I'm going to hold it up nice and close to the screen, give it a minute to dry, and you can see the close-up details of what I've, we've been working on together. Okay? This is a pretty good example of how things are coming together and how we're building up layers slowly. We're using different brushes, going from a bigger brush to do washes, to a smaller brush to do small details, giving you a nice clean look at how to build up those layers for realism. I, I think this still needs a few more minutes to dry, so I'm going to start to move on to simple, but we are going to come back to the trees on the realism top side, okay? Um, but I just want to keep this moving along today. 
I like to talk a little bit too much. Hopefully it's not too much information to you guys. Hopefully it's all helpful and clear. All right, so for the simple, I'm going to do very flat colors, and then I'm going to go back in and add details after those flat colors dry. So I'm going to use this sap green right off the bat, and I'm going to mix it with this dark viridian green that I have here. And mix it right here, and I'm going to use this all the way across, even though the trees in the far side here are not the same as the trees here. I'm simplifying everything. Um, for the natural trees, I probably would go for a little bit more of this green mixed with yellow if you were going to break them apart. But because I'm, I'm mixing them all together and keeping them all very simple and graphic, I'm going to treat it as if it is one illustration. So really easily go in here and add this flat color. I'm using this flat brush. And I talked a little bit in the stream this morning about how I use these cheaper walnut brushes that come in a pack of 20 when I'm filling in flat colors. And I really invest my money in the nicer, smaller brushes that you'll see in just a few minutes after we start to add some details in here. Um, I like to use a mix of expensive and more affordable brushes. Personally, it just saves me money because um, I have a tendency to beat up on my brushes. But also, it makes it easier for you guys to jump in and get started if you wanted to join me. You don't have to buy the most expensive brushes or the most expensive paint. And honestly, if you're going to pick one or the other, expensive paint is much more valuable than expensive brushes. Alright, I'm going to take a sip of a drink here. I need to just pause for just a second. Oh. All right, so I'm just adding in this flat green all the way across, being a little messy with it. You can go a lot slower than I am and get those, those fill in those colors nice and clean and crisp. You do not have to make it this rough. But I'm just trying to roll this along here and I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use a flat gray that I mixed. Again, this is a black watercolor mixed with a gouache. And actually, now that I'm pulling the color out, it looks like a little bit of metallic has gotten mixed in with it as well. So there might be a little bit of a metallic sheen to it as we get going. All right. So this is more gray. And then I'll probably add in some blues. And I'll show you how you can blend them together. Now, again, Blending is going to be a lot easier if you're using a nicer paper, but even if you're using the cheaper paper like I have here, you can still blend. You just need to work a little bit quicker. So I'm going to add in just a little bit more water to this. It might tear up the paper, but hopefully we can get away with it. I'm going to add in some of this blue. Cat hair. Okay. Add in this blue and really mix it in here so that I'm still getting a flat wash all the way across, but it's adding a little bit more of a gradient pattern, combining that gray color with that blue color, which can be really fun to play with. <clears throat> so how's everybody doing? Is everything making sense and coming in clear? My backup, can, um, my backup computer is um, having some internet issues, so hopefully everything is looking okay for you guys. Please, please do tune in if it's not. Alright, so I'm adding in these nice... Oh, and look, I got water all over this. I didn't even realize. Again, mixing the gray and the blue together, and then doing a flat color here. This is the Simplified Mountains. And again, this is the range from Rocky Mountain National Park. If you're just joining, I see we just had a few people jump on and join here. Um, and so I just want to make it clear that we are using a reference from the National Park website. So it is a creative, com uh, excuse me, not a creative commons, it's public domain imagery 
which is really nice because that means you can use it for free without attribution. All right, coming along really nice here. You'll see I left this kind of open and that's because I wanted to get that really warm sunlight. And so I'm gonna mix yellow with gray. It's gonna turn a little green because we've got some blue in there as well. And so it's kind of turning just a little too green for me. So I'm gonna pull in some of this yellow ochre. I think that's looking kind of nice here. If you can see that, I might be a little too low on the screen, but I'm essentially mixing a gray with yellow and a little bit of green. Let me push this color palette up here. And I'm just going to bring that in in the front. Kind of muddy, a lot of pigment. I'm going to bring in some more water on this. Make it a little bit more yellow. I'm getting kind of muddy here. It's not what I originally intended, but I think you guys are getting the idea, hopefully, and figuring it out. I'm just going to take a quick peek at my stream. Drive me crazy. Second computer to drive me crazy. All right. So I'm just going to keep pulling in more of this blue. And then we'll move on to the arches, which will be much easier to do than all these tiny little sections. Okay. So I'm gonna let that dry. Let's jump back up here before I forget and do these realistic trees. Because I don't want to forget to do that. I'm using my triple zero Winsor Newton watercolor brush. This is a fine sable series seven, very expensive very worth it. I'm going to use this for the details. I'm using sap green and I am going to tone that down with a little bit of yellow ochre here and pull this back over into here. And now I'm just going to show you an example of how I would do my trees. A little bit more water here on the foreground. Do my shape in water and then slowly start to add more pigment to that water. I'll do another one here. It's going to take a little bit for that to dry, but what it will do is create this nice shape that looks like a shrub, shrub type tree. And then I do the same thing, a little less water, a little more pigment, and do a smaller tree up here on this hill. And then a tiny little shrub dot, more like dots and dashes rather than actual shrub shapes as you get way up here on the mountain. Okay, so that's how I would handle those shrubs. Again, you have to wait till this background layer is completely dry. And I'll show this up close to the camera in just a minute. Just give me a second to let that dry and I will show you how to do that as well. So. As that's drying, I'm just going to bring in a little bit more of a darker green and just do a tiny little squiggle of that darker green just to get a little shading in there. Just a little bit. Okay, let me hold this up nice and close to the screen so that you guys can get a closer look at that because it's probably blending together on your screen. Okay, so as you can see here, You've got the little tiny shrubs super far away, more like dots and dashes. The middle ground shrub, which is mostly that darker green, sap green. And then your initial green color here with a little bit of dark green mixed in. And you can get a little bit of shading there. And if I'm going hyper realistic, I probably would go in again after this is all dry with another layer of slightly darker green and just add in a couple of small leaves into these close the trees that are closest to you. I'm not going to do that, but that's what I would do if I was going to keep building up this, this area in a realistic way. Okay, so 
So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna jump back into the simple color here. I'm gonna mix this bright orange with the burnt sienna. And it's starting to really look green. And the reason for that is you can see my water is really dirty. This is bad, bad watercolor practice right here. Um, if I was doing a really nice finished illustration, I should be changing out my water. And actually, quick tip for you, what I tend to do so that I don't have to change out my water as frequently as I probably should, um, is that I have two little tiny containers and I use one for cool colors and one for warm colors. And that way your water does not get murky, muddy, as fast as if you're using all the colors in one. And that allows you to keep working without having to take breaks to change out your water. If you're super lazy, or I guess super proactive would be a better way of saying it, you could also um, have two buckets. So sometimes I'll have like a pickle jar of clean water, my two water dishes, and then a pickle jar of dirty water. And I'll just dump it and clean it out. And then that way I don't have to get up again when I'm in the middle of painting in the zone. If you're just tuning in tonight, this is taking me longer than I thought it would. I was hoping to be done with this by now, but I am going over realistic, simple and stylized versions of these rock and mountain formations so that you can learn how to draw them. We did that this morning, how to ink them. We did that at the start of the stream. And now we're just going back in with the color. So thank you for joining me tonight. I see that there's a few people who just jumped on. So um, looks like on YouTube, we're getting more views on YouTube tonight. That's really interesting. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, so I've got a base color that kind of really needs to dry. I'm gonna go back in and do the three different colors that we did here. I'm going to do them more saturated because again, we're doing a simple blocky shape for this middle band here. And so I'm going to use a lot of sap green here and really mix it in with this dark brown, this nice, dark, highly saturated dark brown, really milky, looks like mud almost. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Nice and murky. <laughs> Not necessarily a pretty color in most cases, but for this, it is exactly what I wanted. All right, so I'm going to go in and block in those colors, and I'm just going to pull it down here. Just try to create an entire scene, even though it makes absolutely no sense for all three of these things to be in the same scene, <laughs> because it is not the same areas at all. All right, blocking this in. Now I'm going to go back, see if I can recreate that really soft green that we got. I think it was a mix of these colors. And pull some of that over here. And then add a lot of water to that. Yeah, cool. Not as good as the first time, but still pretty good. Lots of water in there, so that's going to take a hot minute to dry. So we're definitely going to have to let that sit before we could add more details in and add our shrubs in. But obviously a lot faster. And now I'm going to go back into the burnt sienna, which does have a little bit too much orange in it because I was a little sloppy with my orange. I'm going to water that orange out a little bit. Burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm going to mix it up here. Or should I say, not necessarily mix it, but water it down so it's not so saturated. And then do my final, oops, a little bit too much water. Do my final iteration up here. All right. That's coming in together quite nicely. I quite like that. So I'm going to let that sit and dry. It's going to need time to dry. It's got quite a bit of water in it. 
and then we can add a second layer into that. I'm just double checking my messages here to make sure. I think my mom was on stream tonight. She was going to give me some feedback on the sound. All right. Hopefully everything's still coming across pretty good. I'm going to come back to this rock and add just a little bit more shading. Even though we're doing simple, doesn't necessarily mean we can't have fun with some shading on this. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to mix some burnt sienna with this dark brown, which I'm running dangerously low on. And then I'm just going to emphasize these pen marks that we made with a little bit of shading in a darker color. Just for fun. Again, this middle row is not about realism. It's not quite stylized because it's not pushing into kind of crazy colors and, and crazy shapes. We're still trying to follow realism, but not being hyper-realistic, not following it perfectly. Kind of inferring colors that aren't maybe not necessarily there, but kind of look cool. All right, so if you're just tuning in, we are doing the simple versions of these, and we're almost done with this section, and then we're going to move on. I am going to show this to you up close before we move on to the stylized version. So, looking at this up close, more of a realistic way of painting. Just to recap, a little bit more of a simplified way of painting with watercolors, a little bit more of a graphic style. And now we're going to move on to the stylized. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. This is not meant to be in any way, shape, or form based on realism. We're taking the real places and we're really breaking them down and having fun with them. This is the area you want to be in if you're doing concept art, if you're doing video game design, if you're trying to build your own fun, funky style. You want to try to start with the realism and move into a stylized version of your own. And just like I said before, we were inking this. You can start by copying other people's style until you feel more confident in building your own personal style of illustration. I'm going to start off with a bright teal because I love it. We haven't used it yet today. And I'm just going to go in right off the bat with this really nice bright teal because I love this color. It's kind of a little overused in illustrations today and in particular video game art. I don't know if you, either, the few viewers that are watching, if you guys are interested in video game art, you'll see a lot of this teal color used as a outline or a shadow or a highlight. It's very popular. It's a little overused, but it's a really pretty color. Just blocking in some nice basic color here. Um, I did add a river into this one that wasn't there. I'm going to use this darker blue for that and pull that in. Alright, so we're going to use this darker blue. We're going to pull it in. Bring it into the front. Like this, really loose, really stylized. Thank you, I like the teal too. All right, and I'm gonna bring that teal over here. Again, we are completely detached from realistic colors, but we're just having fun with it. All right, and I think the green even though normally I would try, I would probably go for more of a darker green. I think a lighter green is probably going to work better with this teal color. The light green will add a really nice color, a fun color palette. And especially if I start to bring oranges into this rock formation, I think it'll be a really fun video game feel to the color palette. I'm going to fill in behind this as well. 
So it's really coming together for this final version. And again, if you weren't here for the drawing part this morning, you'll notice I made this archway much bigger. And I made more of like a doorway shape and I brought this in and that's all part of making it more stylized and creating your own thing from it. So I'm going to use this sap green. Pull my palette down a little bit closer. I'm going to use cadmium yellow, which I have almost completely lost the green here, but I'll be able to fix that later. I just need to pull some of that water out of there. I use a lot of light greens and a lot of my color palettes. Back up some of this water. I'll fix that later. I think I got a nice light green here. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to bring that into this illustration here. And really use this lime green for the trees. I think it's kind of fun. you're just joining tonight thank you so much for being here i really appreciate you being here tonight we have moved from realism down to simple style into stylized and i'm just finishing off the color i'm being very loose and having a lot of fun with it and not being super serious about this bottom section because it is about having fun it's not necessarily about being realistic anymore All right, I'm using quite a bit of water, so again, I'm going to have to let this dry, but we still got a few more details to finish off up here that I want to show you before I stop. I really want to finish this all the way through, so hopefully you guys don't mind. If some of you have popped on here to see some wood burning, I promise I will be doing wood burning a little bit later. I just really want to finish this off first. All right, adding in the color here. Still using this light green that I created with cadmium yellow and sap green. Windsor Newton watercolors is what I'm using. It's a really good brand um, of watercolors. I love their their color, their pigment. Okay, bring this over here. Almost done. It's green. All right, let's let that fade off there. Oh, I see I'm getting slightly off camera here. Okay, scoot this up a little bit. Okay, so you'll see I left this kind of blank. I'm gonna go back in with some really warm yellows and add some yellow into that. And I actually think what I'm gonna do is pull in a little bit of red as well. The reason I'm doing that is I want it to be like a sunbeam right on the top of that cliff. I don't like how that's looking. I'm a little too messy here and that's because I am trying to speed this up a little bit. I probably would try to let things dry so that you don't get too much of that color interaction that's happening, especially with the blue and the yellow, because it's going to create a green smudge there, but I think you get the idea. All right, I'm going to finish off this red rock, and then we'll finish off the details here, and then we will call it a night. I'm going to add in some bright yellow, reds, and oranges. I'm getting tired of all these muted colors. So this is a burnt sienna. I believe it is cadmium orange and a little smidge of red. And I'm bringing in, I'm mixing them together right on the page. So I'm not actually even mixing them on the palette. I'm just mixing them on the page, letting them kind of blend together to create this really interesting shading. And just like before, I will hold this up to the camera closer so that you can get a better look at it and in at the gradient in just a few minutes. Okay. 
you have any questions, feel free to drop them. Hello, Lily D on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're doing well tonight. Thanks for saying hi. I really appreciate that. If you are on YouTube, I'm a little bit faster to respond to the chat on Twitch. So if you have any questions, it might be better to hop on over to Twitch and ask them. You can ask them on YouTube, it just will take me a few minutes longer to respond. Okay, I really like how this is blending together. I think it's coming out pretty nice here. I'm going to pop back up here to work on the last few details for our simple. Actually, what do I want to do here? I think I'm actually going to knock it down rather than having the tricolor. I'm just going to do this burnt sienna color in this area. And then I'm going to make the rest that like gray volcanic rock color and I'm actually going to make it a little bit of a darker gray than we went previously just to make it really look different than the rock formations over here. I have just a tad too much water in this. If you were doing this I might suggest a little less water because you can see my paper is really starting to buckle. And that's not good. We want to try to avoid the buckling of the paper as much as possible. But again, this is cardstock. If you were using watercolor paper, you wouldn't have that problem. Alright. So I think that's coming along pretty good. Looks very volcanic. volcanic. <laughs> so I'm going to hold this up nice and close so you can get an idea of those colors a little bit closer. Especially the gradients between the reds and the oranges and the brown down here. I think it'll look very different here. Yeah, I can already see that it looks very different color-wise. So, simplified, or excuse me, stylized, simplified, realistic. All right. Let's add in the last few details. There's two things I want to show you really quick before we head out for tonight. First thing I promised I would show you this morning when I did this portion, and that is how to add those birch trees, those tree trunks back in with the white gouache. And it's very simple. If I had my white gouache readily available, I would actually pull it straight from the tube, but I don't. So I'm just going to reactivate. I'm going to use actually add a lot of water into this white. The trick here is to have a lot of pigment so that you can get that nice strong white line that we talked about earlier. Okay, so I have a lot of water there. I'm going to try to get a really nice big chunk of pigment mixed on the tip of my brush. This is my nice triple zero a Windsor Newton watercolor brush. And then I'm going to go in and very lightly just do my tree trunk. And a few little branches here and there. So whether you're doing the realistic or the simplified version, this is the way that you could bring back in those birch trees. And you can see the white is blending with the green. It's fading back in, and that is because I don't have enough pigment for the gouache to lay on top of the watercolors. So I definitely need more gouache. Like I said, if I was doing this on a really nice illustration, I would pull it straight from the tube and not mix it with water at all. Alright, that kind of went a little overboard there, but I wanted to illustrate what I was talking about where you can go back in and add those artificial highlights with gouache. That's 
what that looks like. All right. And then lastly, I just want to add in these little trees. Same process, but just for continuity's sake, I want to make sure you understand using my triple zero Windsor Newton watercolor brush. This is, sounds like I ran out of music, so I'm just going to start this up real quick because it helps me stay focused. And again, if you're just joining, I use Artlist for my music. Um, which is how I license all of my music. It's a really good website, a little bit more expensive than others, but if you make video content, um, it's well worth it to invest in Artlist because it has better soundtracks than some of the other options out there. All right, so I've got my brush loaded up, my tiny brush with some sap green, some light green here. And I'm just going to do some detailed trees here right in the front, just like we did up here. But I'm going to make them a little more stylized by making them kind of a more squiggly shape than they actually were. And I'm going to make them slightly bigger than they actually were so that we really see them pop. So here's my foreground tree, midground tree up here on the hill. And then tiny, tiny shrubs, which I'm just going to do little dashes and dots, very simple. And that is how I would handle the trees in this section. So all very simple, easy to do. I'm going to add that detail, that nice touch. All right. So I think that about covers it for this section. I'll give you just a few minutes if any of you guys have any additional questions before I am going to try to try to end the YouTube stream and just move on to Twitch. So if you are on watching this on YouTube and you want to join me over on Twitch, I'm just going to do a hangout session. You can ask me some questions um, and I'm going to try to do some wood burning um, and maybe probably talk just a little bit less because my throat is killing me, but I need to get some work done. And some of you on Twitch really wanted to see more pyrography, so that's what we're going to do. Um, if you just caught the tail end of this video, I am going to narrow down my tree video that I did and my mountain video and make them into one concise, short, probably 10 to 15 minute video. Um, easily to, easier to digest, but obviously will not include as detailed of a breakdown as we did here today. Um, I'm also going to take these trees and these mountains and create some header and icon ideas for bullet journals since that's what those of you on YouTube voted for. So that is coming in the next day or two. I promise it's coming. I'm working on it as you can see here. <laughs> so thanks so much. Um, let me go ahead and put you guys on a short break screen. For those of you on YouTube, it is going to end as long as I can figure out how to end that live stream and then I will start back up on Twitch. For those of you on Twitch, I'll be back in about five minutes, five, ten minutes, and we'll be doing some pyrography. Thanks so much. If you're not going to stick around for joining me tonight, be sure to give me likes and follows and things if you appreciated it. Um, it helps me to know that you enjoyed the content and that it was helpful for you. And again, I mentioned this earlier, if you do create anything with these different designs and, and the style that we talked about today, Please do tag me on any of the social medias. I'm on pretty much everything. You can find everything linked in both my description boxes, my website, um, and I'm pretty much on everything as Artist Explorers or Artist Explorers of the World, either or. So be sure to tag me. Let me check it out. I want to see what you guys are creating with all this information that I'm giving you. Have a good night for those of you on YouTube, and I will see those of you on Twitch shortly.